Saxa Methonium or Saxinile choline was introduced by Thessalif and Fold in 1952 and was first used clinically by the Italian pharmacologist Daniel Bove who won the 1957 Nobel Prize for the same. Saxinile choline should be stored at 4 degrees centigrade temperature because it undergoes hydrolysis at room temperature. The onset of action is rapid within 30 to 60 seconds and the duration is usually less than 10 minutes. Because of this early onset and short duration, succinyl choline is the ideal muscle relaxant for intubation. However, due to the side effects, the use of succinyl choline is restricted to rapid sequence induction or difficult airway management situations. It is rapidly metabolized in the plasma by pseudocholinesterase or butyrylcholinesterase enzyme which is synthesized in the liver and present in plasma. So to avoid this rapid metabolism in the plasma, we have to inject succinylcholine rapidly. Now coming to the mechanism of action, at the neuromuscular junction, succinylcholine acts just like the acetylcholine, binding to the same receptor of the acetylcholine, producing action potential and muscle contraction just like acetylcholine. However, in case of acetylcholine, it will be immediately metabolized by acetylcholinesterase present at the neuromuscular junction. But succinylcholine is not metabolized by this enzyme. The metabolism depends on the concentration gradient between plasma and neuromuscular junction, making excessive availability of succinylcholine at neuromuscular junction. This excessive succinylcholine produces repeated depolarization and contractions in all muscles which can be seen as fasciculations. As a rule of physiology, persistent depolarization will make the membrane to go refractory to succinylcholine as well as acetylcholine for a transient period. This transient period is the period of relaxation. This kind of block is termed as phase 1 block. Now coming to the systemic effects of succinylcholine. The most prominent effect of succinylcholine is hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia occurs due to excessive muscle fasciculations. In normal circumstances, serum potassium increases by 0.5 milli equivalent per liter and by causing contraction of neck muscles thereby blocking jugular venous outflow such an oil choline can also increase the intracranial pressure for the same reason the intraocular pressure may also be increased the next effect would be on the muscles due to repeated contractions or fasciculations causing masseter spasm or myalgia or muscle soreness elsewhere. This is a common complication seen in almost 40 to 50 percent of the post-operative period. These muscle pains which are due to muscle contractions can be minimized by Precurarization. Now, precurarization is the technique in which one tenth dose of a non depolarizing muscle relaxant is given three minutes prior to succinyl choline. This small dose of non depolarizing muscle relaxant blocks some of the receptors, which will decrease fasciculations and hence myalgia. 
This technique can also prevent the rise in intracranial and intragastric pressure, but does not reliably prevent rise in intraocular pressure. In the gastrointestinal tract, the intragastric pressure is increased due to contraction of abdominal muscles and by activating GI muscarinic receptors, it can also increase GI secretions and peristalsis. In the cardiovascular system, succinethonium not only acts on nicotinic receptors but also on muscarinic receptors producing bradycardia. Excessive bradycardia can sometimes cause nodal rhythms. However, at very high doses of succinylcholine, it may cause tachycardia due to the stimulation of nicotinic receptors at sympathetic ganglion. It is important to note that succinylcholine is one of the most commonly implicated drug in malignant hypothermia and just like any other drugs anaphylaxis is always a possibility now hyperkalemia that is a serum potassium level of 5.5 milli equivalent per liter or more is an absolute contraindication for using succinylcholine. Other conditions like raised ICT, glaucoma, and eye injuries are relative contraindications. Now, in case of newborns and infants, they have regenerating nerves, therefore have extra junctional receptors, making succinethonium to act on more receptors producing more hyperkalemia and up to two to three months after trauma up to six months after stroke and up to one year after burns in these conditions the nervated wall the regenerating nerve develops extra junctional receptors again producing significant hyperkalemia renal failure per se is not a contraindication but it is often associated with hyperkalemia again in case of prolonged intra-abdominal infection acidosis is inevitably associated with hyperkalemia <laughs>